The specials are going up. Uh-huh. Yes, that'll do. So a little over half a year ago, I made a video talking about the Eureka effect and my opinion on it. I titled that video what could have been considered the too long didn't watch summary, which was the worst wrench. And I still stand by that opinion that the Eureka effect was out of the five options that engineers have for melee weapons, the overall worst wrench for most situations. And then about three months ago, Meet Your Match comes along with a change to the way that this wrench works. And what do you know? The Eureka effect is actually a good option now. Uh, The main complaint that I had about it before was that the downsides were just like way too harsh to make the upsides worth it. Like the biggest one being that the metal that you pick up off the ground was cut in half, 50%, which seems fair on paper, but forcing the user to teleport to spawn and back in order to make up for the penalty just isn't fun. I mean, if you didn't have an active teleporter exit to rotate back to, you were basically stuck with a wrench that turned full ammo packs into medium ammo packs, which was super annoying to deal with. Not to mention this was back when teleporters still cost 125 metal to build. So now it's only 20% less metal from pickups, which doesn't even feel like too much of a change, but couple that with the change that no one asked for but every engineer player loves is the teleporters built by the Eureka Effect user cost half as much to build and upgrade, which means that you're spending 50 metal to build an entrance and exit, and then spending only 200 metal to upgrade it to level 3, which basically means you are almost guaranteed to have a teleporter active, which makes the teleporting to spawn and back a million times easier. That being said, the main downside that I see from the Eureka effect is now the fact that it's basically the anti-jag. It takes twice as long to wrench boost a building, which makes this wrench terrible for building things under pressure. But that doesn't even really matter because you can switch between wrenches at spawn. And because you can teleport to spawn, switching off of the Eureka effect can pretty much be done from anywhere on the map. So the teleporting is easier now, which makes the wrench both useful and fun to equip. But the best thing about the Eureka effect is how insanely useful the cheaper teleporters are, especially because you can change off of the Eureka effect at any time and still have that teleporter that you built cost 200 metal to fully upgrade. And this might still be a glitch. I I, I mean, it hasn't been confirmed to not be a glitch, but I I feel like they would have fixed it by now if it was. And I honestly hope that it's not because it really does add to the versatility of this wrench for pretty much any situation where you are building a teleporter at spawn, no matter what wrench you plan on using past that point. The new Eureka effect also makes the jag effect roll out slightly faster because of how cheap it is to upgrade, but it also just makes it simpler because you don't have to drop everything at spawn. You can just walk out there and place all your buildings down and then just teleport back to spawn and switch back to the jag or whatever wrench you want to use. It just makes everything that much simpler. That in itself makes the Eureka effect the go-to setup wrench for payload defense. There's no reason not to equip it when you're rolling out for the teleporter thing, but the speed boost of the wrench boosting doesn't matter at all during setup time, so you might as well, right? It's also nice for when your teammates take the metal that you need accidentally or otherwise. And if you saw my last Engineering 101 video about playing conservatively and falling back, the Eureka effect is just so great for that concept because it's pretty much ensuring you your escape if you have the awareness to recognize when it's a good idea to get the heck out of there. So I like that it kind of offers an option for people with game sense and rewards skilled players in that way. So yeah, I've been using the heck out of this wrench for the past few months and I'm going to guess that I probably use about 25% of the time that I play engineer, mostly to set up on payload and place teleporters down at spawn. But the wrench definitely does still have its weaknesses. Sometimes the lack of metal from pickups comes into play, but not nearly enough to really count as a huge downside. Uh, The biggest detriment that the Eureka effect has is how slow it takes to get your buildings up compared to the other options. But if you just play around it by utilizing when you can use it, it's barely noticeable. It's basically just makes it so that you can't place the building super aggressively, which is always a good thing for defense, especially. Um, There are still a few things that I'd like to see changed about the Eureka effect. However, these are just quality of life changes. I think the stats on this wrench are pretty much close to perfect right now. Uh, Ever since I made that original Jag effect rollout video, I've been using this bind that makes it so that I have just press my B key to teleport back to spawn. I don't even have to have my melee out. It just makes the whole teleporting process slightly faster. And I honestly don't see why they just wouldn't make that how the wrench works. Like you should be able to go into the advanced options and just assign two specific keys to teleport to spawn and your exit instantly. Because right now I I feel like just because I have this bind, I'm at a slightly larger advantage than the average person who uses this wrench. And I honestly don't feel like it's overpowered. I just feel like everyone should have the ability to customize their game like that without uh, like having to access the custom exec files or anything like that. And then the other thing that I'd like 
like to see changed about the Eureka effect is something that I actually complained about in the original video about the old version of this wrench is when you teleport back into spawn, you have to go touch the resupply cabinet to refresh your health and ammo, which is really annoying, especially on maps like Swiftwater where the cabinet is on the other side of the spawn room. Uh, it's just kind of inconsistent because some maps have the cabinet right next to where you spawn, like in the first room on Upward or the last spawn on Borneo. And then on other maps, the cabinet is super far away from where you teleport in. And there's also a few spawn rooms that don't even have the cabinets in them at all. So it's just kind of irritating that the Eureka effect is slightly better depending on where you appear in the spawn room, which is more or less random. And I don't like random. I like consistency in my weapon stats. Thank you very much. So yeah, the Eureka effect is overall actually usable now. And it's surprisingly really fun to use. The more I use it, the more little tricks I discover surrounding what you can do with it. There's always the classic teleport and surprise thing that basically is just a fancy version of engineering. But there are some cool things you can use it for, like having an easy solution to annoying spawn campers who destroy your teleporter. You can just go back to spawn and replace it right away and then go back to your nest. It's easy. And even when a spy saps your teleporter, you can actually teleport directly to the exit while it's still sapped and then remove it. I guess the teleporter is still considered active even when it's being sapped. Just be careful what you do because the spy could still be around. So I officially revoked my previous claim that the Eureka effect is the worst wrench. It's actually really helpful in a lot of common situations and it's now fun to use because you're not held back by annoying downsides. So I hope you guys get around to revisiting the Eureka effect like I did today. Thanks so much for watching and I will talk to you nieces and nephews next time. Bye bye.